Thanks, Christine, for joining us today. You know, it's an absolute honor to sit down with you and learn about your journey and, you know, share some of the learnings and advice to the, the community uh, as all up, right? So thanks. Thank you. Uh, you know, can you, can you speak a little bit about your own personal journey and how you got started into uh, solving this problem and, and, and what, what are you going after solving and, and, and what are some of the hurdles that you have faced along the way? Yeah, so I guess to, to take a step back, you know, our company is called the Global Startup Ecosystem, mm -hmm. which is a mouthful, mm -hmm. um, but it was purposeful to talk about how do we bring startup communities around the world, especially in emerging markets, together to have access to the right ecosystem resources and stakeholders, mm -hmm. whether that's investors, partners, sponsors, tech moguls, anyone in the space that empowers entrepreneurs, we want to bring them together to empower them. Um, so we actually started this journey, or at least I personally started this journey, um, pretty much as a founder of my first company in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, quit my job in banking, moved to Dubai actually, um, to build a, a tech company. And from the experience of building that company, all the trials and tribulations mm -hmm. of being an entrepreneur, I applied that to launching the global startup ecosystem with my partner. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually happened by accident. Oh, so my first startup was on purpose. Uh -huh. um, it was called Vendetti Connecting Travelers to Street Markets because I grew up as, in Haiti as a street vendor and mm -hmm. wanted to create a digitized platform for street markets. Awesome. Um, but in 2015, when we were pregnant with our first child, um, I couldn't travel as more right. as much, you know, with the first company. And so I learned how to code. Awesome. And yeah. the site that I built is what went viral to build what we do today. Oh, that's that's a, such yeah. a powerful story. Like so, <laughs> so you know, building that muscle on learning how to code, and, and then feeling that pain mm. uh, in a way to to see you know how how you can take some of those learnings back yeah. and and solve this problem at a, at a much larger scale, right? You know, I can attach to some of the things that you talked about. You know, I, a few years ago, I was I was in Singapore, like you know, again, oh. very very <laughs> advanced country, and you know, but. We, they have access to all the resources. Mm -hmm. Despite of that, the struggle was real, right? There's there's an individual to trying to solve a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Having access to the right capital, mm -hmm. right people, getting these advices, right? It was really, really hard. Yeah. And in a government was backing the whole initiative, saying, you know, I'm gonna give you a place to sit down together, mm -hmm. I'll give you access to resources. But you know, taking some of those things, right? And mm -hmm. then serving you know underprivileged and, mm -hmm. and giving access and opening that door out, right? You know, that that's something that's phenomenal, right? Can you mm -hmm. can you talk more about that? Like how, how are you enabling that scenario for yeah. for Yeah, I can speak to that. I mean, I, you said such a beautiful example about Singapore. When yeah. we look at places like Dubai and Singapore or even Silicon Valley in New York, we think of these places are very established right. tech ecosystems that have all the resources, right. all the network and international and local supports to make it happen. Right. But when we think about access, it's not just, you know, the markets that actually enrich like those hub mm -hmm. cities, but also emerging markets. I tend to feel like they're innovation rich, but resource poor. Right. right. I do feel like innovation happens in emerging markets. For example, Haiti, where we launch um, not only the first accelerator program in the country, but also the first tech summit there mm -hmm. that by far now is the largest in the entire Caribbean, which is called Haiti Tech Summit. Oh, nice. um, when we said that we were going to start building tech summits in emerging markets, um, it was met with a lot of like comical ridicule. And second, a lot of people felt it was a charity mm -hmm. move, right? That we're just doing this to support the ecosystem. Right. Not realizing that we were going there because we saw an opportunity, right? right? Um, fast forward to today, Haiti Tech Summit by far gets at least a minimum of 123 million social media views. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it literally breaks the internet in a yeah. sense because if you Google Haiti, Haiti during those two days, you only see images of the summit. Mm -hmm. We've had obviously Forbes as a partner, Inc. Magazine, all the biggest media brands. But also, when you're building tech um, programs like this in emerging markets, you make a real direct impact. So for example, we brought Airbnb to Haiti, mm -hmm. we brought Facebook to Haiti, Google, and um, a lot of different of the partners and initiatives in the country. Mm -hmm. The president spoke at the um, summit every single year, but also launched the country's first incubator. Awesome, yeah. um, you know, funded by the government, mm -hmm. and as a result, that inspired the first private incubator. Mm -hmm. Now Haiti is popping up in terms of the largest developer community in the Caribbean, the largest ecosystem for tech entrepreneurs. So you're talking about a space where, if you look at Haiti, mm -hmm. you think like it's a country that has so many issues and is not really bountiful when it comes to resources, but it's now one of the biggest case studies when it comes to tech ecosystems mm -hmm. in the world. Now fast forward to cities like, for example, what you said, that are established, mm -hmm. where we're based out of New York, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. New York also has spaces where there are pockets of innovation that's not being tapped into. Right. And so we travel the world every single year. 2017, we did Haiti Tech Summit. Last year, we did eight summits around the world and expanded to Ghana. Mm -hmm. This year, we had 23 summits around the world. And that's wow. in places like Saudi Arabia, to Haiti, to Nigeria, to Ghana, and around the world. And believe me, it shocks people just how much more there needs to be done to really yes. build a tech ecosystem in those communities. Right, those are some of the harder challenges that you, I'm sure that you have faced when you're trying to scale this out, right? 120 million views, yeah. that's, that's not an it's not you know, easy, easy yeah. uh, thing to achieve, right? And then, and not, not just having access or giving access to all the resources, right? The, can, can you talk about some of the outcomes that you're seeing, some yeah. of the results, like, you know, success stories that are coming out right. of these ecosystem? Can you give some examples? Yeah, we have too many examples <laughs> um, to show, but let's take a step back to 2015 when we first launched mm -hmm. the platform. Um, Originally, because I grew up in Haiti, I wanted to build a platform for entrepreneurs in the Caribbean and mm -hmm. thought that maybe when I posted on Facebook, my personal Facebook mm -hmm. page, that I want to mentor about 10 startup companies, I thought we received maybe hopefully five or so applications. That website that I coded in 2015 during my pregnancy went viral. The next morning when I looked at the application, we received over like like 600 plus different applications from around the world actually. Wow. And those applications came from the Middle East, mm -hmm. Africa, Europe, um, and Asia. So mm -hmm. that first year, I built an accelerator program from scratch from the mm -hmm. website that I coded with 500 companies mm -hmm. um, from around the world. The second year we did it with 750 companies and as of 2018, every single year we accelerate a thousand companies across 90 different countries every year. Now that's virtually, right. I want to make that very clear because when you're trying to empower ecosystems, not everyone can pack up and go and right. move to Silicon Valley or move to the top incubators within their home country. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we do is democratize access virtually. Okay. So every single year we select a thousand companies to accelerate and also spotlight to investors both locally and around the world. So Mm -hmm. That accelerator program have led to like companies who are being featured at Mass Challenge, mm -hmm. Y Combinator, that receive investments from Google Cloud, um, from IBM. So we've seen a lot of outcomes <laughs> so from that awesome, accelerator. Yeah. Second, remember, we empower virtually, but we also empower by bringing resources to those countries. So the only reason why we started building tech summits around the world is because we were actually frustrated with our partners. Mm -hmm. Our partners were having a perception that were, they were, again, charity, that mm -hmm. they were making an impact mm -hmm. um, for these communities and they didn't see the potential of those communities. Right. So with those virtual accelerators, you say, how do, what would happen if we built a tech summit in every country on the planet? Right, right. That has been also been an exponential journey because we started with Haiti Sex Summit, like I said, in 2017, right. eight last year, now 23 this year. And so now every single year, we're actually growing this right. Tech Summit ecosystem where, as I said before, you have case studies like Haiti where we brought Airbnb, Facebook, and Google to that country and right. now it's expanding. Even Saudi Arabia. You would think of Saudi Arabia as a very, you know, country that's resource rich. Right. Where we are there, there are only three incubators that's actually operational. Wow. So we're actually helping governments and foundations build accelerator programs across the country with our partners. So to answer your question, we have tons of case study examples of entrepreneurs who either use our accelerator program mm -hmm. for validation, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes we demystify the power of these entrepreneurs in these markets. Because right. if you're going to Haiti for the first time, you wouldn't believe some of the top tech talent that we have there, right? So we demystify the entrepreneurs. Right. Second, we give people an annual platform to tap into where you don't have an excuse. If you want to fly into Ghana, mm -hmm. We actually help the stock exchange actually evaluate companies because of the first tech summit. Right. Google AI that launched in Ghana mm -hmm. last year actually launched at our summit. Oh, so nice. now we're making it easier for people to be able to launch initiatives in these countries through our summits because the president's there, prime ministers there, all government networks are there, but also all the private sector, the banks, the schools, the incubators, the accelerators, right. all the pioneers in that ecosystem is there. Um, so it's not an easy journey, obviously, right. but. We've been exploding, mm -hmm. um, and I want to end by saying that you know we're also doing it during a time where I'm sure you're seeing the news. Right. We're living in a time where, because of tech, things are at an exponential rate. Right. People are able to really be enabled, but also we're living in troubled times as well. Right. I'm sure you've seen, um, actually a couple of weeks ago, there were riots in the streets here mm -hmm. in Lisbon. There's been riots in Ecuador, which is a failed state, Haiti, Tanzania, Venezuela, and so, the time frame of us building these tech summits around the world is actually probably at a good time. 
because governments are suffering trying to build out, you know, unemployment, the future of work. Interesting. And so the timing of trying to leverage tech to really empower these ecosystems has come at the right time for us to really support these governments around the world as well. That that's something really awesome that you just yeah. mentioned there, right? You're not just solving for a one problem yeah. around giving access. You know, the the impact is actually more. Bigger. Yeah. It's more revolutionary. It's economical, right? I, yes. social, it's political as well. Yes, yeah. right. And and that those sort of momentums will never go unnoticed, right? You know, yeah. you're you're like you said, you know, you're seeing the ripple effects, effects of yeah? it. Yeah. Like, you know, people are coming in, investing, they want to be part of this, right? Yeah. And that is something super, super amazing, right? And yeah. I'm personally excited about that journey that you're you're on and, and trying to help the society as a whole. That mm -hmm. is so powerful and, and meaningful, right? How do you what do you see this going towards in a six months or a year or two or maybe a decade from now? Yeah, I mean, our mission has been like by 2030, we want to have a tech summit in every country on the planet and nice. to be rebrand cities of innovations in the future. Ah. So, for example, people have said, you know, our platform's called the Global Startup right. Ecosystem, but we don't see that brand as much. We've seen Haiti Tech Summit. Right. We've seen Ghana Tech Summit. We've seen Saudi Tech Summit. Why don't you put the Global Startup Ecosystem brand out there? Mm -hmm. Because our mission is to not only bring these ecosystems together, to really find those resources, but also rebrand those countries. It frustrates the hell out of me <laughs> that when people come or think about places like Haiti or Ghana, that they believe that they know those countries better than they've heard from people who are from there. And so we're also on this mission to leverage tech to like really change how people see those countries. So right, right now we're here in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. You probably would never have come here if it wasn't for the Web Summit. Right, right. right? Let's be very frank about yeah, that. Yeah. And so these tech summits and these tech accelerators that we build helps people to come to these countries for the first time, mm -hmm. see people differently for the first time, right. but also think about seeing these places as places of opportunity right. and not places that are just like a secondhand thing to think about when it comes to tech and innovation. Especially when you're thinking about Silicon Valley, New York, and London, these places, they're always going to be pioneering tech hubs of the future. They're always going to have their place in the world. But with $7 billion people on the planet mm -hmm. we need to look at all different emerging markets right. and what's happening around the world so for us you know to say that we started with one summit in 2017 eight last year to 23 this year we already have 54 summits scheduled for next year by the way right, right? right so that's an exponential growth part where our brand and what we do around the world is not only being received um, by different stakeholders in the ecosystem but also being used as a platform to actually accelerate those markets economically as well right because right. we do bring a lot of economic activity I mean this year alone about 38,000 people are growing through our summits right, right so that's right. a lot of people that's moving around um, going to different countries through our platform and so for us it's really for me as someone who grew up in Haiti and is now building this tech platform in emerging markets now when people say oh you're from Haiti oh I've heard so much I can show you countless examples of what's happening in Haiti exactly. and it shocks people um, to see that and also see these places with, with respectfully as yes, well right yes. because I want people to get excited about these markets and so for us now We've expanded so many markets that um, one of the biggest things that we align ourselves with mm -hmm. is the sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. um, that's the reason why our mission started in 2015 with a goal of um, fulfilling that mandate by 2030. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest um, numbers in the goals that we care about mm -hmm. is number 17, which is partnerships. Right. Obviously, when we first got started, all we had was the idea. Mm -hmm. Right. When we did the first Accelerate right. program, we had no prizes, right. no giveaways, just me in front of a screen teaching people how to build and scale their companies mm -hmm. based on what I've done making the Forbes list in 2016. My business is a business case study at Harvard Business School and really monetizing that business in six months. I've been teaching people how to do that since 2015 mm -hmm. to now showing people like, you know, partnership number 17, how do we get partnerships on board? Yeah. So obviously we had all the brands that I told you about, mm -hmm. but Digital Ocean is also a partner. Right. When we go to these countries, a lot of people have never heard of Digital Ocean right. as a platform to build and scale their websites, their apps and their platforms. Now they know about these companies that are doing great work around the world. Um, so for our partners, it's a great opportunity for them to go to markets they haven't been to. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's also a great opportunity to showcase kind of what we got. Right, yeah, that yeah, there are yeah. some cool things happening in these countries, and really giving them an experience that they probably would never have expected. Exactly, yeah. right? You know, there's there's a curiosity aspect for yeah. everybody, and then there is an experience they want to have. There's a huge gap on connecting those yeah. two, right? And and most of the time, like you said, the perceptions are driven by media stereotypes, right? You yeah. Know, you have certain things like this is how things are, but unless until you be there on the ground and provide those opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. The whole mindset and how we look at things changes overnight, right? So mm -hmm. that is. 
another, you know, <laughs> impact of the side impact of what you're trying to solve is is so powerful, right? Because mm -hmm. that's that's something that we have to solve as a society. Mm -hmm. It's all up, right? And that's 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 fascinating. So how's how's your journey been uh, working with Hatch? Yeah. And you know how how's that helping you out and your company out? I remember the first time I actually um, reached out to the Digital Ocean team via email about mm -hmm. being a part of the Hatch program. Funny enough, I already knew someone in the ecosystem, which <laughs> nice. helps a lot. And when we first blasted our companies, because you have to understand these companies, they're coming from Kenya, Haiti, mm -hmm. Nigeria, um, different parts of the Middle East, and they've never received a platform where they can virtually accelerate online, but also get access to these prizes and perks that you had to relocate to Silicon Valley for. Mm -hmm. um, so when we email blasted, like here's the Hatch program, mm -hmm. you get all these different credits to right. build and scale your company online, we got a lot of great reactions for it. Nice. And you have to understand for companies, when they when we go into these countries, they may not recognize the brand Digital right. Ocean immediately, right. but they recognize the value. Right. Right. To be able to have a, a platform that can help you pretty much build your database, build your apps, build mm -hmm. your website for free within the first couple of weeks of your business as you scale right. and monetize with this company, you remember it for life. Right. Because for a lot of these companies, they have to find financial resources to build. Right. And that's not easy in those markets. Right, right. So not only do they have the resources from Hatch to build and scale their companies, now they have the brand. Because now they could go locally and say, you know, I'm a startup company from Haiti mm -hmm. and I partner with Hatch mm -hmm. to be able to build and scale my company. Mm -hmm. Locally, that goes very far because right. now they could go into any incubator, any local program and say, this is a part an uh, international partner that we're working with to build our company. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, we provide more than just content and access and experts mm -hmm. and speakers and perks. We also provide a lot of validation. Right. Because we are still living in a time where the ecosystem is easier to start a company now more than ever, yep. but also you're competing with a lot more manpower. Yep. And so when you have these brands backing you locally or internationally, it mm -hmm. helps a lot. So it's been really great. Um, I'm happy that we're able to expand with the Hatch program and with Digital Ocean as a whole. Because keep in mind, the partnership wasn't just the accelerator perks. Mm -hmm. It's also formally just traveling together, meeting each other at different functions around the world. But also, you guys hosted us right, right. for one of our programs where we invited entrepreneurs um, from um, merger markets to mm -hmm. our head office in New York. Mm -hmm. We had Ndaba Mandela as a speaker, oh, Mandela's nice. grandson yeah, yeah. at Digital Ocean, nice. right? And so it's not just you guys traveling us to, you know, give these entrepreneurs access to resources digitally, but also that physical, you know, presence of really interacting with the Digital Ocean space to give people access to these speakers in these markets as well. So it's been a two-way street for us, and it helps a lot. And I hope that we continue into 2030. Yes, likewise. You know, <laughs> Until the it's very end. Super humbling to, to yeah. even learn that you know we're able to contribute to this, yes. this bigger mission that you have, right? And that's that's fantastic, right? Yeah. yeah I, I have a one very curious question you, know, you yeah. as an individual have achieved so much right and, and there's you know people there are so many people around the world probably looking up to you to as, as an as an inspiration yeah can you talk about a couple of people that you look for an inspiration right yeah that you, that you can share with us yeah I mean at this point like I look at you know pretty much people who've done it before because I always tell people anything that you're going into someone has done before mm -hmm. don't research just their life story but right. what they say then done you know, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So obviously you have the big pioneers, like, you know, the political figures right. like Michelle Obama or Obama right, right. who politically have shown how to market a brand and a message to inspire a nation. Right. Um, I know people look at them for other reasons, but for me, in this word, world that we live in, in, your art and your ability to communicate your value, your mission, and your pretty much your power right. is very important. So I'm very inspired by how they were able to market their message mm -hmm. to galvanize the movement. Second, I would say more, I guess, closer to home, my my family, right? right. Um, obviously, my husband, who is now the managing partner of the Africa Future Fund, his style of leadership inspires me every single day because he says, like, look, we should go in markets that people don't really think is the next big thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at how we scale our company, we didn't start with Silicon Valley, New York. Right. We started with Haiti. Right. We started with Ghana. Right. We started with Nigeria. We started in places where people thought that were second class class places mm -hmm. that weren't places for big innovation. Um, so I'm hugely inspired by what he does. And third, I definitely would say I'm also inspired by, honestly, the entrepreneurs that we onboard. 
Because a lot of the entrepreneurs that we board, they come with no expectations, mm -hmm. right? And they're shocked and they're so eager to learn more and more because you have to visually see when we do a accelerator program with a thousand companies from 90 different countries, you're literally seeing someone in the streets of Nigeria and right. Lagos on their phone, mobile phone, listening in on listening to speakers right. virtually, and at the same time, someone from you know Rio, Brazil, is mm -hmm. also listening in the same part, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, all at the same time right. on their phone or in the lobby of a hotel because right. they can't find Wi-Fi just so they could be able to engage with speakers and entrepreneurs from around the world virtually. That to me is like wow. If you want to talk about entrepreneurs of tomorrow, that grit, that fire, that energy, right. they have it. Right. And to imagine that people didn't even realize that these entrepreneurs existed, mm -hmm. all because in 2015 we coded a website and said, let's just do a virtual accelerator program. Mm -hmm. That's all it took. Right, right. It didn't take a big, big case study business plan. We didn't roll out all the shots. We just said, let's get online and say we have this program and see who signs up. Right, right. All with a Facebook post. And here we are. And so when I'm looking at inspiration, I definitely try to do my best to be inspired by that journey and right. tell people the truth. Right. Because this journey, we've scaled crazily. I mean, right. I'm sure people remember us in 2015 right. to scale to a thousand companies per year virtually right. to about 54 summits that we're launching next year. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. And right. a lot of times when people see us, you know, with Forbes magazine or all these different media partners or tech companies that we work with, that it looks like it was been an easy curve. But we post right. the highs and lows. <laughs> yeah. We post, you know, the sad deals that mm -hmm. we lose and also the um, disrespect that we face, right, right? right? When we're trying to pitch these countries and these hubs and the reactions that people have when they're not excited about going to Haiti or they're not excited about going to Ghana. Now, we are struggling with bandwidth. Right. With the amount of energy and excitement, the same people that ignored us in 2015, right. that now here in 2019, as we usher into 2020, are just literally on board and scaling with us. So, so for us, it's been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's always the entrepreneur journey. But mm -hmm. for myself, I post everything on my LinkedIn, the highs and lows, all the people that we work with, right. so people can understand that it takes a village to build something right. up worth, right? And you got to see how that evolves over time. Right, right. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I really love what you said there, being transparent, right? Sharing yeah. what you've learned and being honest about that. That not only helps you win the trust, but mm -hmm. you build that emotional connect with oh, yeah. people that you're trying to solve. And that is so powerful, right? I'll, I'll close by saying, obviously, it takes a family to make things happen. Right. I'm also a mom. Yeah. So I have two little doors, one, three, nice. one, one. Mm -hmm. And they're with us here in Lisbon right now. They nice. travel with us. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it goes back to that original statement I told you about this time is exponential, mm -hmm. right? Things are moving at an accelerated rate. But when I look at my kids, mm -hmm. like I can't make excuses for them because right now, even, they're also seeing the world ahead. Like I'll right. give you a quick little story right now. You know, we think that we're trying to keep up with what's happening in tech. We bought a TV um, just like two weeks ago mm -hmm. um, for the living room. And my daughter, she's three years old, God rest her soul, like she's so cute. She went up to the TV and started swiping the TV. Oh, wow, interesting, right? yeah. Pretty much because her assumption is that, you know, this is supposed to be like touch screen to mm -hmm. like move forward. So our kids, they're already interacting with tech in a completely different way. Right. And I feel like the ecosystems that we're building in the future, you can no longer not talk about tech. Right. And when we're doing this, um, when we're building this platform at the global startup ecosystem, a lot of people are saying like, you know, is it worth it doing this right now mm -hmm. when there's so many other issues that these countries are facing, right? For us, we believe whatever problems these countries are facing, whatever ecosystem challenge they're facing, tech is going to be part of that solution in one right. shape or form. And our generation behind us realized that. Right. And so building, being able to build on that and leverage that has helped us tremendously. And so definitely stay tuned. Yep. Um, as we roll out, the global startup ecosystem is growing more and more. We have a fall tour to, across Africa to right. 10 countries, ending with Ghana Tech Summit in December 13th. And just pretty much next year, we kick it off again with 54 summits then in January in Davos. So stay tuned for more. It's a lot awesome. coming up. Yeah. Yes, I will. I will definitely for sure. And I'll be following the journey. Is I'm Please super do. excited and motivated after this conversation. So Please thank do. you very much. Thank it's you been so pleasure. much. Thanks, <laughs> thank you.